I know that's a pretty outlandish claim to think that you could build a portfolio of whiskeys uh, that would amount to over a million dollars. But you've got to understand how the, I came to this conclusion. I bought this bottle of Pappy Van Winkle, 23-year-old, in 2009. And then I found out just this earlier this year that this a similar bottle that was bottled in 2009 sold at Sotheby's for $52,000. I paid two hundred and fifty dollars for mine. So I know it's possible. I'll show you in this video how it progressed and how it happened. I've also, I was gifted this bottle of Blanton's. It sold for an 18 for about $59, and it's now worth about $600. So it's over a tenfold in a very short period of time. So what I've done is done a lot of my research, and I figured out how I'm going to do this, and I want to share it with you. And possibly, it's a lot of fun. Actually, it's a lot more fun than trading stocks or investing in stocks. So let's get deep into it and see if this is something that you're interested in. It's, it has some other benefits as well. Best of Us Investors presents Kerry Griegmeier. So when I realized that I had... Yeah, a $52,000 bottle of, of whiskey on my hands, I decided I needed to figure out how this happened and come to an understanding of the whiskey industry and the pricing and the laws that are around it and see if I could duplicate it, if, if, if it was possible. And I came to the realization that this has been going on for years, that in fact, Scotch whiskeys, there's some of them that sell for $156,000 out of the distillery and and there is a group of people that see this as a tremendous investment because as there is a limited quantity made and the majority of the commodity is consumed and so as they as time goes on this bottle just becomes worth more and more so I then started doing my research and I, for two months I've been reading about it and I've been taking notes. In fact, I decided I need to write a book about this so that other people can understand what is happening and how they can profit from it. So that's something I will do. In fact, I'm going to give away a thousand copies of the book and you can go into the link and you can be one of the thousand people because what I want to do is put it out there in ebook form and say, if you're interested, then you do some research and you shoot some holes into what, I've, what I'm projecting and what I'm writing about, and then let's make a better book. And then we'll publish it and it'll be available. So let's go back to how did this happen? As I said, I bought the bottle in 2009. It was it was actually bottled in 2008. And here I've created a graph I, or a, a chart and, and I tracked its history from $250. And what I think it actually happened is it grew at a rate from the some studies that I've done of about 35% per year. And then this auction blew it out of the water. It wasn't worth uh, $52,000 the day before that auction. I am estimating it was probably worth something in the neighborhood of $32,000. And they bid it up. I don't know exactly why this year was bid up, but that's what's happened. Then I basically said if it continues to grow at a, a rate of about 30%, and again, you've got to remember that there are going to be fewer and fewer bottles. I mean, somebody's going to break one. There, I, I estimate there were only 3,000 made in uh, 09. So I would guess at this point there's probably less than maybe be a hundred of them out there. And in 20 years, 10 years, whatever, there'll be even less because some will be drank, some will be lost, some will be broken, whatever. So I see it as going up. Now, is there, are they increasing their, their production? Yes, they are. In fact, uh, 
uh, Buffalo Trace, who distills this, has actually increased their plant size by one f- by twofold. So they're doubling their size. So I look at that and say, okay, they're going to be making more of these. So will that make the price go down? Well, if you're the manufacturer of whiskeys and you have one whiskey that's got to sit in the barrel for 23 years, are you going to put all your production to that and wait for uh, 23 years before you get any return on your investment of $1.2 billion to increase your production? I don't think so. I think you'll probably take that product that has to sit in the barrel the least amount of time and sells for $32 a bottle, and that is consumed in great quantity, and the, and your markup is roughly the same in the 20, Pappy 23 as it is the Buffalo Trace four-year I think I'll make more of that four-year stuff and get my return on my investment. In fact, if I'm a stockholder, that's what I'll vote for. So I don't see, in fact, I see since they'll start in, they will start increasing the production, that will only make my older bottle worth more as these new ones aren't as rare as the old ones, if you follow my logic. Okay, so that's what I did. And that's what you you see in that chart. Now, here is a chart I did on Blanton's. This is a 2016 bottle. And I believe, and and based on the pricing that I've looked at, that it is, um, in fact, increasing at a rate of 30%. So this will turn into, by 2030, a $4,500 bottle that only costs um, somewhere around $89.00 on the uh, national scale here in in Alabama it only costs 59 but I'm showing the national scale price so that's kind of where I want now how do I get this pricing information I belong to a a website that gives it to me let me show it to you on Pappy Van Winkle this is a history of the pricing on Pappy Van Winkle 23 year old and as you can see here uh, if I go back to 2013, uh, the price in the store, average across the United States, was $388 a bottle. It jumped up in 2014 all the way up to 3000 So that's a, a almost a tenfold jump in uh, a matter of a year. And then you can see a new bottle okay, settled down more like three twenty eight, twenty seven hundred, And then uh, uh, you had another jump in uh, 2021 where that bottle, that new bottle of um, 23 would be selling for $5,900. It's currently a new bottle is priced at $6,700. So am I confident that the price of this whiskey, and particularly one that is actually was bottled in 2009, is going to continue to go up in price? Not only the new bottles are going to be selling for over $7,000, But my old bottle, of which there are very, very few, because someone has drank most of them, is going to escalate even higher, because there are fewer of them. Now, as I said, Pappy is going to increase its production, but... That won't start until the end of 2023, and the 23 bottle won't be available until 2046. So I am very, very confident with that in mind that my pappy is going to make it to $100,000. Now, this little line down here is a benchmark. That is to say, of all whiskeys, what was the average in 2013? It was $30 a bottle as opposed to 388 on the Pappy. Now we come, and, and after, what is that, um, uh, almost nine years, the average has gone up from 30 to 43. But my pap, the Pappy has gone from 388 to 6,775. So it's not all whiskeys 
that are going to help me get to my million dollar portfolio. I have to be selective. And I will use this data that I have found on winesearchers.com and I do belong to their pro or uh, I believe it's called pro um, uh, group so that I can see this data. This data is not available to most. So that's why I'm confident that my pappy will continue to be a big producer. My real task now is to find others that I can buy now that are going to duplicate what Pappy has done in the past uh, 13 years. And that's my goal. Now, let's talk more about that. So that's how that all comes together. Now, what am I going to do is I have decided I am going to specialize on bourbon at least originally, to build my portfolio. And I've identified uh, 23 uh, bourbons that I believe will have a uh, extraordinary escalation in price because of their situation. And then also because as being in a controlled state where the distributor or the, the uh, distiller um sells it to the state store, the state store puts its markup on it, and that markup is consistent somewhere around 15 to 20%, whereas, and so I can buy this bottle for $325, okay? If you go to buy it, as I told you elsewhere, other than in 17 states, you're going to pay $6,000 for it. So I have an arbitrage. I have an immediate price. That's what I've identified. Those bottles where I have this advantage because I'm in one of the 17 states that don't put it out there and let the the independent uh, liquor store owner say, hey, there's a tremendous bottle. I just bought it for $200 or $299 and I'm going to sell it for $6,000 and take my family on a vacation. Well, that's what happens in 33 of the states. So I've identified in my state where I have an advantage. Sorry if you don't live in Alabama or um some of the other 17 states. I, I don't have them on my uh, mind, but they are in the book that I'm willing to give you so that educate you. I'm also going to educate you on the laws that go around this. Is it legal for me to sell this bottle for $52,000? Yeah, but I'm going to have to pay capital gains taxes on it, and I'm going to have to pay sales taxes on it. But if I do that, I'm legal. Again, that's all disclosed in the book so that you understand. And the book is going to be free. You go to the link below. So these are my 23 bottles that I'm going to be searching for. I intend to put in enough investment that when I sit down on my spreadsheet and I project out the prices and I will use that pricing guide that I just showed you, I, am anticip I will anticipate in 10 years from now, my portfolio will be worth $1 million. So that's my goal. Am I going to mix rum and gin and scotch into it? Not at this time. And that is a decision I've made that I've got to understand bourbons totally. Then if I see an opportunity in scotch, I will possibly add that to my portfolio. But I not must understand the, the basics of bourbon before I go into anything else. And that's what I'm inviting you to do is... I'll share my knowledge. I'll share my research. I'll send a thousand of you a copy of my ebook. I would expect it's going to be done uh, at the end of March, 1st of April. Why is that? Because yesterday I went to the first uh, distribution by the ABC stores in Alabama where I got in a line. I got up early in the morning and went and stood in line to get access to distribution. I went to a store and I was 
14th in line um, at at 9.15 in the morning. They opened the doors at 10 o'clock. I knew that from the posting on the wall that they... They were going to have some Eagle Rare, 10-year Eagle Rare, where I want it, but they put on the door, they only had six bottles of it. I knew I wasn't going to get that. So then they had on the door that they had 12 bottles of the, the new Blantons. I was 13th in line. Well, luckily, the guy in front, one of the guys in front of me was there for the, the, the Eagle Rare, and he left. So I was the 12th guy through the door, and so I got another bottle of Blanton's. Now, this coming March 3rd Saturday in, in the month, or the, the Saturday following the third Monday in the month, they're having a lottery. Nita and I have both registered for the lottery, and they will give us a number. And this is when they're, the Pappy Van Winkle is potentially going to show up. And, so, and, and some of these others that I'm anxiously trying to acquire into my portfolio because I have an arbitrage advantage and because I, history tells me their price is going to escalate. So, I want to give account of that in the book and, and, and my learnings from it so that you can learn from me and we can grow in this together. So again, the book won't come out until sometime after the 1st of April. But if you want to get in line, ha. Huh, it's kind of like the lottery, uh, for the 1000 that I want to give away. And I'm going to ask you, then, if you do take that, I'm going to give you the means to write me back and say, hey, this is what I know. This is a hole that I see in your analysis, and let's make it a better book so that we all benefit together. Okay, that's my take. As you can see, I get excited about a lot of things. Um, this really excites me. And, and what am I going to do with this stuff? Well, I'm going to leave it to my family. And then I'm going to teach them. I'm going to make them read the book as to how to sell it and how to profit on it. And, and here's another thing. Why is it I want to do that? If I sell this bottle, I owe long-term capital gains on it. Okay, 250 to 52,000. That's a lot of tax. Okay, but on the other hand, if I leave it in my will to, as it will be, my son in law, he gets a step up in basis. Okay, so the day after I die, it's not worth, let's say, 75,000, or it's, it is worth $75,000, but he doesn't have to pay the capital gains from 250 to 75,000 because it gets a step up in basis. So if he turns around and sells it the day after I die for $75,000, he pays no capital gains. He will pay sales tax on it if he wants to stay out of jail, but that's how it works. And these are the kind of things that I want to share in the book. And these are the kind of questions I want you to come back from you so I can build this book into a real valuable asset and then make it available to anybody and everybody on Amazon. Okay. Uh, again, I'm excited about this. Uh, I think it's a, a wonderful opportunity and I want to include you in it if you want to be involved in it. I'm also involved in uh, a number of um, of Facebook pages that deal with bourbon, and and I and I'm getting kind of a tempo of uh, who, and most of these people are consumers of bourbon, not investors. But it it helps me understand uh, the community that is involved in this, and I want to educate some of them as well as to how to turn this into a consumption uh, an investment rather than a consumed product. Talk to you more about this, I'm sure, in the future.